Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this next event in our new Nor'easters virtual event series, Preparing Your Student for Success. My name is Molly and I'm the Director of First Year Admissions here at the University of New England. And I am joined by two of my wonderful panelists tonight. I have Elizabeth, who's a parent of a current student, and Gracie, who's our Assistant Director of Student Engagement, supporting the first year experience. And so I'll have them introduce themselves really quickly and then we'll move on to tonight's format. So Gracie, do you wanna go first? For sure. Uh, my name is Gracie Nilsson. Uh, I work over in student engagement and I've been with UNE for almost two years. Thank you. And Elizabeth? Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Hardigan. My daughter, Kelsey, is a senior um, majoring in athletic training with a minor in nutrition. And technically, she's in her first year of her master's program. Awesome. Thank you both for being here with us tonight. So we're going to be chatting about the college decision and transition process and get some tips from our two experts here on ways in which you can support your student through this process. And so considering these unique perspectives, we'll discuss how you as the parents, family members, guardians, or support systems for your student can champion them to make an informed and exciting decision on where they will spend their next four years. In addition, we'll be talking about how to help them learn and grow as people throughout their time in college. And I do want to note that while we're providing tips and guidance on navigating this process tonight, please know that we do understand that every family experiences this differently. And the opinions and the views that we talk about tonight may or may not work for everyone, and that's okay. We're really just hoping that the info tonight gives you something to think about and hopefully provide some helpful takeaways based on our professional expertise and personal experiences. So on that note, we would love to get your questions for Gracie and Elizabeth. There will be an admissions representative in the chat box to answer any questions that you have but we also encourage you to submit your questions to Elizabeth and Gracie in the question box at the bottom of this screen. We will answer as many of these questions as we can tonight. And if we don't get to your question, not to worry, someone from the admissions office will reach out to you in the coming days to answer your questions. So I wanna start our conversation by acknowledging that the college admissions and selection process, while very exciting, can also be stressful, nerve wracking, unfamiliar, really pick any adjective that you're feeling, especially if you haven't been through this process yourself before, we are here to validate that. But that's also where we come in. The admissions office is here to help you through this. We recognize that this is a family decision for a lot of people, and that means that we're here to help everyone involved. So Elizabeth, can you just touch really quickly on how you or and or Kelsey um, may have interacted with the admissions office during Kelsey's college admissions process. Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, I would say during her search, we visited UNE several times. Um, and with each visit, campus felt different. Um, just from the fact that we started out in summer when campus was a little slower as college campuses typically are. Um, and then we toured it twice again when student body was more active. Um, and at the same time, we, we were developing, she was developing her, um, her decision. And so therefore our questions and our thoughts were becoming more deliberate with each, um, with each visit. Um, and so each visit provided us greater insight. Um, and I would say the additional interactions were more and more helpful each time, again, because our, our questions were more deliberate. Um, so between the admissions staff, between the ambassadors, um, and then talking with faculty, um, those interactions helped solidify her decision that UNE's community and opportunities would fit her best. Thank you for that. And to kind of piggyback off of that a little bit, do you have any advice as it relates to communicating with the admissions office for parents, family members, guardians, student support systems um, who are in that phase of the process right now? 
Oh yeah, the um the high schools and regions um each have their assigned to any counselor, and I know through our process we definitely reached out to our counselor, which happened to be Molly at the time, <laughs> um, and so certainly reach out with any lingering questions that you may have, or you know as you're going through the process, um, the the counselors are very helpful. Awesome, thank you for that insight. So in the admissions office, we work throughout the year to make sure that we're providing you with a variety of opportunities to learn about UNE, what we have to offer, whether that's an open house, an academic info session, a campus tour, et cetera. So like Elizabeth mentioned, coming to campus can play a really big part in a student's decision. So in the admissions office, we work throughout the year to make sure that we're providing you with a variety of opportunities to learn about UNE and what we have to offer. So whether that's an open house, an academic information session, a campus tour, there's a lot of ways in which a student and their family or support system can come and explore our campus. It's important to recognize that once a student is accepted, you may now be looking to have more in-depth questions answered, again, like Elizabeth was mentioning. So taking advantage of visit opportunities is a really great way to do that. Accepted student events are meant to, of course, garner excitement about attending UNE, also a great way to get a little bit more swag, but they're also intended to provide you with the folks around campus that you want to speak with to get those in-depth questions answered, whether it's about academics or student support services. So Gracie, a question for you. You have um, been in attendance for our accepted student events before. Are there any questions that you would encourage students or their family members to ask or information that you think would be beneficial for them to find out during these days in order to make an informed decision? Yeah, um, I think when it comes to accepted student states, it is that like these, this is your opportunity to have those face-to-face -face, in-depth, sometimes very granular conversations about the UNE experience so that you can feel really confident about your choice of school. Um, so if it's something super specific about the meal plan or something super specific about the residence hall room or so on and so on and so on, this is your chance to have those conversations in a face-to-face -face format because there are going to be representatives for all of those different offices um, and really get a feel for what that student experience might be like. You can also do that through doing some of those tours on those days, the different panels offered to students and their families. Um, this is really that opportunity to get super detailed if you haven't yet and have, again, those in-depth conversations for sure. Awesome. Thank you. And so to kind of round out this first part of our conversation, Elizabeth, a question for you. What are your tips for parents, guardians, family members, support systems, um, anyone who might be supporting a student through the college decision process? Uh, so tips and tricks. I would definitely say visit campus. If you can, I can't stress that enough. Um, we visited campus number of occasions. Um, it helps your student, but it also helps you envision their life within that community. Um, and there's lots of facets to consider, um, obviously academic programs, but um, also the array of organizations. What are they going to join? How are they going to get involved? Um, what job opportunities might be there? Um, sports, whether it's varsity, intramural club sports, um, as well as residential options, you know, talking to the current students, where have they lived? What have they done? Because um, that will help give you a better idea of how they will make the school their home. Um, so take the time to talk to those current students, see and hear firsthand how they built relationships, friendships, you know, and gotten the support that they've needed. Awesome. Thank you. So now we're going to shift gears a little bit. If your student has decided to attend UNE, a big congratulations to you. We are excited for them as well as for your family to be part of our Nor'easter community. So quickly, I just want to talk through some next steps for your student and some things that you can do to prepare for a successful transition. Um, but first, before we get into that, another question for Elizabeth. Can you speak about what it was like for you and your family when Kelsey made her college decision? 
Oh gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was definitely exciting. Um, but it was also reality hitting. Um, you know, as Kelsey was making her decision, um, she wrote pros and cons lists for each of the schools that she was considering. Um, and then with that list, Steve and I were able to talk to her about how they fit in with her goals. Um, and in turn, she could then make an educated decision, um, an informed decision for herself, you know, as to which school was best for her. You know, again, many facets academically, athletically, socially, um, and definitely financially. That's a huge, a huge piece of the puzzle. Definitely. And as a list person myself, I fully support the pros and cons list. I think that's a great, great <laughs> advice. Um, so you, hopefully you have all heard that UNE has extended our deposit deadline to June 1st this year due to the FAFSA delays. So with packages not being available until April, we want to make sure that we give you ample time to make that informed decision. Um, you know, like Elizabeth was saying, the financial piece can be a really big big part of that puzzle. So we want to make sure that we give you plenty of time to get that information before you make a decision. We will be having two accepted student days on our Biddeford campus that we'd love to see you at. Those are happening on Saturday, April 6th and Saturday, April 13th. In addition, we have accepted student tours three days a week. Those are offered Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can find information on all of those events at une.edu slash new nor'easters. And it's important to note that you don't need to pay a deposit to attend any of these accepted student events. They're open to all of our accepted students. Additionally, we have our virtual events like this one tonight, where you can learn more about UNE from the comfort of your own home. You can find recordings of our past events as well as future events at une.edu slash new nor'easters slash events. And so now let's get into some additional steps that students will need to complete once they've deposited. That includes completing a housing and dining application. So for that application, as you can see, the deadline is July 1st. So students have plenty of time to get that done. Room assignments will be released in mid-July. And this is where you can include any sort of dietary restrictions that will all be included on that application. If you have any questions, I encourage you to reach out directly to our housing office as well as to our dining services. Students will need to attend one of our orientation sessions in June, but accompanying student orientation is family orientation, which we encourage you to attend. So Gracie, a question for you about orientation. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of attending family orientation and maybe what, what goes on during that? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, family orientation happens simultaneously with new student orientation. It'll be that first day of student orientation um, and really is an opportunity for families to get content that is tailored to their experience and their questions and their needs as families and support systems for these new and incoming students. There is a little bit of the like fun activity stuff that we do as students in terms of meeting lots of new people, getting to see more of campus. And then there are additionally like content heavy portions of the day where you can do panels with relevant offices, uh, faculty and staff, learning about the student experience, both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, as well as having parallel conversations to the stuff that your students are learning in terms of learning about self-authorship, problem solving as a new college student, and some of that change in mindset and experience going from high school to college. Awesome. Thank you. And so one of the last major steps to complete is sending in your health forms to the university. So immunization and health insurance forms are due on July 1st, and you can find information on how to submit that online on our Student Health Center webpage. So don't let these next steps be overwhelming to you. We really just wanted to put them on your radar as things that will be coming up once the student deposits. You can always use our online resource, which is une.edu slash new nor'easters. This contains this checklist and is a great way to help you keep track of the next steps that you need to complete. So Elizabeth, I have another question for you. Was there a point during this kind of like next steps phase that was most exciting for you as Kelsey's parent? 
Yeah, I think um, knowing that she found her home was really important to us. Um, and then all of those fun activities that were then going to come up on the horizon. So, um, you know, as Gracie and you have mentioned, the accepted students days are a great way to, you know, meet their classmates, learn who is going to be part of their community. Um, and then the summer orientation is another great opportunity Again, you know, getting to know more people. Um, and then her trailblazer trip, which was um, like a small mini taste of what's to come and, you know, get to know people on a, on a different level, you know, through, through activity. Awesome. And Gracie, Elizabeth has mentioned the trailblazer. So can you just talk to us a little bit about what those are? Yeah, for sure. Uh, trailblazers are technically pre-orientation programs because they can run either right before or simultaneous-ish to your orientation experience in June. These are uh, trips that start kind of on campus and then very often go off campus to do something with different levels of outdoorsiness to help students get to know other incoming first years, get to know themselves a little bit better, and really just get out of their comfort zone and try something new before they start here at uni. So like I said, there's a range of different trips depending on your student's comfort level with the outdoors. There is stuff that is, uh, you're still like staying in a residence hall room, but you are getting out into Southern Maine during the days. And then there are things where it's like you are in a tent for three to four days. So there's a good range based on things that your student has done before, maybe things that your student hasn't done before, but it's a really great way to really like, dive into the UNE experience. These are really great opportunities for students to make those connections, to try something new, even before they like fully set foot onto campus, quote unquote. I highly recommend our Trailblazer trips. Really good community building in, in those as well. So absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. So our last topic for tonight is talking about supporting your student from the decision-making process through to the transition to starting their college journey. Positioning students for professional success is a pillar to our values here at UNE, and our students go on to do some really wonderful, fulfilling, and innovative things once they graduate. So much so that UNE has been ranked number one in the state of Maine for students getting a job for the last five years. We are also the number one provider of healthcare professionals in the state of Maine. We have excellent career advising office that helps students with resume and interview preparation. And this service is in addition to the networking that the students do within their intended field. Our faculty are active practitioners in what they're doing and in their fields. So they're constantly helping students to make connections build their, and, and build their own network. So developing these skills along with their practical and professional skill set supports student success. So Elizabeth, can you talk to us a little bit about the growth that you've seen in Kelsey's ability to deal with adversity or celebrate her wins since she has started her college journey? <laughs> well, Kelsey entered college during the fall of 2020. If you remember mm, COVID, um, the school was, uh, was excellent in handling the pandemic and frequent communication with the students and with the parents, um, you know, especially because everything changed day to day. Um, so they were able to keep campus pretty much as normal as possible, but there were still, you know, a few restrictions here and there, like dining, you know, in the masses. Um, and because she's so extroverted, she ended up deciding that she needed to somehow get a little bit more socialization than what she was, you know, experiencing. Um, so she decided to get a job at the eatery in the commons. <laughs> and that was her way, you know, of, of being able to meet even more people and start meeting the staff and the faculty. Um, so that was a neat way for her to build her social foundation. Um, but I would also say, um, on another note, I guess, studying, um, studying is very different from high school. Um, you know, I think learning to advocate for yourself is, is really a crucial life skill. Um, and so I think for her, you know, she was so afraid of falling behind. Um, so she utilized the Student Academic Success Center um, really quickly. 
Um, I can't remember if that was based off of a recommendation from an RA or from a friend, um, but you know, she set up reoccurring appointment slots for writing help, for study techniques, and just to make sure that she was staying on track. Um, but she also utilized her professors. Um, you know, she, she made sure that she built relationships right off the bat. So in case she was struggling on the material or how to study, you know, she could use them as a, as a resource too. So, um, you know, both those and, and studying with classmates are, are huge, but advocating for yourself is, is the greatest skill. Awesome. Thank you for that. And so Gracie, who supports our first year experience area on campus, is going to chat with us a little bit about how you can support your student through the beginning of this transition. So I will turn it over to Gracie. All right. Um, I think it's really important to like recognize and affirm that there are a ton of emotions that come with the transition into college life. They have probably already started for you and your families and will continue throughout their first year at UNE. Uh, we really want all of our students to have this transformative educational experience and to feel like they have the tools to succeed. There are several things that you can do to assist your students through this transition. Uh, helping with paperwork and those administrative tasks is really huge and really helpful, but I'd also encourage families to talk about the change in their support systems as they approach the start of the college experience. You won't be with them every single day, and as young adults, they're responsible for their own experience on campus. And I think that that can sound kind of, kind of intimidating at times, but it is a huge part of college students fostering um, adult life skills and kind of laying that foundation for their future. Encourage your students to advocate for themselves, to seek out those opportunities to try new things, and please try not to solve problems for your students. Let them learn how to do it themselves. I know that that's a big ask. I know that it's challenging, but it is something that really serves your students, both in their first year and just in life in general. Um, I think on the very like tangible and concrete side of things, a big thing that you can do to help your students with the transition is helping them build up the habit to check their email every single day. There is a lot of important communication that comes over email before they set foot on campus, and then again throughout those four years in undergrad. Um, this is how we keep in touch, and it's how they can stay informed about what's happening on campus. Please help your students find their UNE password, set up, it, set up their email on their phone if that's helpful, whatever that looks like, but so that they are prepared to succeed here. So over in student affairs, we talk a lot about the peaks and valleys of a student's first year here on campus. There is almost always an ebb and flow to the school year as there are more activities, busier classes, less sunlight, newer friendships, sometimes like roommate things come up throughout the school year, and all of those other things that are popping up and then going away as the months pass. Um, it's already started for seniors as they're depositing at their different schools and entering into that like honeymoon phase of their time as college students. Throughout these peaks and valleys, it is important to know that there is a wealth of support systems available for your student. You are welcome to research them and tell your student about them, but we would encourage you to have your student reach out to those supports on their own as they identify them and as they realize that they need them and as they decide what is appropriate. Whatever they decide that they need, whether it is uh, getting tutoring for that super intense chemistry class, um, if they have some kind of roommate question or issue, um, or just getting more involved on campus, there is an office for that. There is something that can help them with that. Your students should take the lead on seeking out those resources so that they can best connect and, again, grow those adult life skills and have the experience that they are looking to have and really make the most out of the opportunity that comes with going to UNE and getting to be a part of this community. We are thrilled and honored that your student has chosen UNE and that they are bringing your support as part of their foundation here to campus, encouraging them to find those additional supports on campus um, and in this new place will help them to do their best and make the most out of the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you, Gracie. I, there's two things I want to just kind of jump in there um, and add, which is for accepted students days, if you come to one of those days here on our Biddeford campus, um, we will have folks around that can help you log in to those various platforms, um, set up passwords, things of that nature. So if that's something that might be of a particular um, stress to you or your student, those are great days to come in, and our ITS support services are more than happy to help you kind of work through those. Thank you, Gracie, for all of that information. So Elizabeth, a question for you. 
Can you speak to how you feel that UNE supports Kelsey in developing these skills that Gracie mentioned and some of the steps that you have taken to foster the development of those skills in Kelsey as she's kind of gone through um, her college journey so far? Yeah, I think it's um I think it's really important for the students to have the power to inquire, right? Um, talking with their residence assistants um, and other students are going to be the first people that they encounter on campus. Um, and the RAs, other students, you know, staff there, they're the ones who are going to help answer questions about the dorm, including how to run the washing machine. Um, as well as, you know, work through roommate matters, um, how to find a job on campus or clubs to join. So they're going to be the ones to help facilitate your student um, get, getting settled into, into college life. Um, the RAs are students too, and so they've been there. They've had the firsthand knowledge of what had helped them. And so they, they give great advice. Um, on the academic front, I would say, you know, Kelsey made it a point to get to know her professional mentor almost immediately. So along with her professional mentor and her academic advisor, um, you know, those relationships have aided her in better understanding her course planning, um, but also managing um, her minor, you know, and planning out her classes for her minor. Um, so while I love her and will always be here to guide her, you know, this is ultimately, I feel, her journey, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to do the best that I can to, to support her um, from afar, but let her navigate. Um, I think the saying goes, um, you know, I'm not an empty nester, I'm a bird launcher, and I'm really trying to live by that. <laughs> um, so utilize UNE's resources, staff, um, you know, if, if they, if you don't know who to contact, someone's going to, so just, just ask. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. So a real quick thank you to you both for your time tonight and your contributions to this conversation. I hope our audience has found it helpful. I certainly have enjoyed hearing all about what you have to offer. Before we get into a few questions, I do just want to get some final advice from you. So we'll start with you, Gracie. Any advice that you have for family members in supporting their student through the admissions and decision process? Yeah, I feel like I've hinted at it and or outright said it many times throughout this webinar, but I think really um, letting your student and or encouraging your student to take the lead as they begin their college experience will really serve you all throughout the transition. Um, it's really an opportunity for them to start to build the life they want to lead as adults and is really beautiful to see it from a staff perspective. So I can't even imagine it from a family perspective. So please encourage your student to spread their wings if we want to get really cheesy with it. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Elizabeth, any final advice from you? Well, I think as a parent, um, just try to enjoy the process, delight in the excitement. This is a, a very exciting time for your student um, to find their home, um, embrace the nervousness. There's a lot to consider. There's a lot to think about. Um, and so it can be maybe a little nerve wracking, but, but embrace that um, because that will lead to hopefully appreciating, um, you know, your child's growth and, and watching them, them thrive. I love that. Thank you so much, both of you, for um, that insight. And I, I think it's really helpful um, and hopefully reassuring to our audience. So we are going to get to a couple of questions now. Again, a reminder, if we don't get to your question, don't worry, one of our admission staff will reach out to you in the coming days to answer that question. So let's start here and let's see what we've got. So, all right, our first question. Um, this person notes, my student tends to be more on the shy or quiet side. Does you any have ways to encourage students to get involved? Um, Gracie, I'll send it to you first. And then Elizabeth, if you have any follow-up, feel free to jump in after that. 
Yeah, for sure. There are tons of ways that we encourage students to get involved that hopefully can meet your students' own comfort level, though I encourage them to push the boundaries of that as they are able. Um, in addition to June orientation that students have to go to, there's also what we call New Nor'easter Days, which is I think three to four days before the school year starts in August. So that is an opportunity to learn those last minute things about campus, really feel prepared, get to know people better, especially related to like their residence hall floors, the places where they're living to help them feel connected to the community in that way. And then we also have weeks of welcome, which is the first two weeks of the semester where there are evening and weekend programs just everywhere for students to get out of their room at least a little bit, uh, meet new people and try new things and really, really enmesh themselves into the campus. I encourage people to go to the involvement fair where all of our campus orgs, uh, clubs, clubs, sports and a few different offices will have tables so they can really get a great feel for all of the opportunities available. Um, there are tons of ways to get involved and we love to see students trying something new and trying to find um, the things that are going to help them flourish here on campus. I love that and I, I will also make a quick plug for the involvement fair because I tell all the students that I chat with that's a great place if something even seems a little bit interesting to you put your name down, get the information, go to the first meeting. If it doesn't work, fine. If it does, you've just, you know, opened yourself up to meeting some new people and, and hopefully trying something new. Right. So I'm definitely a big, uh, a big fan of that involvement there. Yeah. Those okay. club signups are not a binding contract by any means. Yes. So you can try it. And if it doesn't, it's not your jam, then that's okay. And if it is totally incredible, fine. also love a great it. opportunity for free stuff. Yeah. We all love free stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Elizabeth, anything else to jump in with on uh, getting involved? Yeah, so I, I think somebody gave Kelsey or, or my other daughter the advice too about for the involvement fair, signing up for five clubs, you know, and then attending three and then deciding on, you know, three, two or one, um, you know, just based off of your interest and, and all. Um, but I also think uh, the resident assistants do a great job, um, you know, of having some icebreakers, um, hosting socials in their dorms. And that's a great mini way of getting to know people, you know, in a, in a more um, intimate format. Um, so, so if your student is shy, you know, that's a great way just to kind of get started in the blossoming. Yeah. Awesome. So the next question that we have, how does UNE support the mental health and wellness of their students? Uh, Gracie, this might be another good one for you to answer. Yeah, mental health is a part of so many conversations that we have on campus. We know that our students need to be well as people in order to show up the best as students on campuses um, generally. Uh, when we're talking about mental health supports and how we do that, it is part of those foundation conversations that happen during orientation as they are beginning their classes, all of those sorts of things. And there are lots of ways to connect with different supports on campus. We have uh, health and wellness programs. So those are great ways, again, to meet new people, to learn about what wellness looks like for you as students. There are, you know, fitness and wellness classes. So if you want to try yoga and if that is part of your like wellness and mental health journey, those resources are available. There is also uh, free counseling on campus available to our students. And that's a really great resource for the students who will benefit from that kind of support. In addition to general, just like care that our faculty and staff show to our students. Awesome, thank you. So this question kind of has two parts. Um, the first part being, if my student starts to fall behind in their classes, does someone let me know? So we'll start with that that first part. Um, Gracie, again, this one might go to you. Um, yeah. Can you touch on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, if your student starts to fall behind academically, no one from the university will let you know. I am sorry to report. Uh, that is part of that different mindset and different approach to education from high school to college. Your student is an adult, so they are responsible for their own academic experience. If you notice something about your student and a difference in the way that they're talking about their classes and that stress level when you do speak to them, encourage them to reach out to their professors or the Student Academic Success Center for support. But that is, again, one of those moments when your student will need to connect with those supports themselves in order to do as well as they can in their classes. 
And the second part of that to kind of piggyback off of that question and answer, if I feel like my student is struggling and likely not seeking the help on their own, is there someone that I can talk to on campus? Do you know who the, the, the what the right protocol is for connecting with someone on campus in that situation? Yeah, so for non-emergency concerns like that, it's kind of a case by case basis. There isn't like a guaranteed step one, step two, step three, um, because it depends on what your student needs in their own experience. Um, the recommendation is that if you have a concern to call the student affairs office, that info can be found on the website um, and kind of share that concern and they can properly channel it to the right person um, and kind of go from there. Awesome. And these are, are really great questions. I'm glad that these questions are being asked because they're they're important. Um, the next question that's that has come through is about accessibility of professors. So Elizabeth, this would be a great one for you to kind of talk a little bit more about Kelsey's experience with the accessibility of professors. Yeah, um, Kelsey has definitely spoken to her or reached out to her professors, you know, before class, after class, she's emailed them, um, you know, to schedule time. They do offer office hours as well, um, you know, but if they don't, if office hours don't necessarily work, you know, sometimes they can make a, arrangements too. Um, they're, they're accommodating and they will certainly, you know, help the best that they can. Um, within reason. <laughs> um, so, you know, don't be shy, reach out, reach out to your professors. They're there to help you. They, they want you to succeed as well. Awesome. Thank you. And so we just have a, a couple more minutes and there's a few other things that I'd like to close with. So we'll take one more question. Um, and this is about family orientation. I think this is a great question to end with. Um, do I have to attend family orientation? Gracie, do you want to touch on, on that really quick? And then Elizabeth, if you have any final thoughts, please feel free to jump into. Yeah. Uh, family orientation is not required for families and support systems for our incoming students. It is encouraged. So there is a lot of beneficial info that is shared, a lot of opportunities to connect with other families and the campus in general, but it is not required. It is required for your students. Please, please, please have your students sign up for orientation, but it's not required for you. Also, one thing that you can do at Accepted Students Day, too. Another quick so true. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth, anything else that you'd like to add to, to that? Um, I would say as a parent, I think um, I think that those days are are a great way to feel connected to the college, um, you know, and to grow together with this with this new community. I know I've said it many a times during this conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a good thing for everyone to kind of keep in mind. And and that goes to say, you know, no matter where your student goes, if there are ways to feel connected to the institution, um, like Elizabeth has said, it, it just helps with that transition. So again, thank you both so much um, for your insight tonight. I really appreciate it. I do want to just close with a couple of housekeeping items. So really quickly, you can submit your deposit at une.edu slash deposit. Once you have sent in that deposit to attend UNE, you can then register for orientation and sign up for housing. Again, that une.edu slash new nor'easter site will become a really incredible resource for you. And then last but certainly not least, I've said it a number of times tonight, we'd love to see you at our accepted students days on April 6th and April 13th. So we hope you'll join us again for our next new nor'easters series event the first year experience, what to expect. This event will focus on preparing for all of the first. So first day, first week, first year, come with your questions about what to expect for your first year at UNE. We hope you'll stay in touch. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions and thank you all so much for joining us tonight.